It's the Ticket Plug. We've been running an online ticket business for over a decade, and now we've created an easy way for you to do the same thing through our private ticket resale community. Joining our community will give you a way to flip your bread and generate profit income consistently. We provide you with all the tools, training, and resources needed to start your life-changing online ticket business. Zero experience needed. To join our ticket resale community, go to theTicketTrap.com. Again, go to theTicketTrap.com. Click the link at the top line of the description to get started right now. My thoughts as well, man. What's up? Yeah. So Dame Dash, man, his um, 33% share of Rockefeller is now going to auction with the opening bid starting at $1.2 million. Now, the U.S. Marshals are pretty much selling off his um, stake in Rockefeller to pay off a debt that he got. He was sued with someone by $800,000 that he has to pay him back. Uh, we know that Dame has been embroiled in a whole bunch of lawsuits. You know, accused of this, accused of that, bad business deals. So they also were saying that Kareem's Biggs Burke tried to come in and, and change the bylaws and stop the sale. But they're going to go on with this sale, man. And um, people are going to line up. The opening bid starting at 1.2. This can go for 10, 20. Who knows how high it's going to go? Well, what's your thoughts on Dame Dash's share stake of Rockefeller being auctioned off for a starting bid of $1.2 million. Jay-Z's going to get it. Let's not even have that debate. Um, <laughs> that's, not even, that's not even a debate. That's Jay-Z's. Um, and shout out to Biggs Burf for, for quietly, because he's kind of always moved in silence from what we see, being a real one and trying to kind of save face for Dame Dash. We seen a couple weeks ago, I don't know if you saw, I'm sure you did, I think Dame went on social media and was like, I'm selling my steak. He was trying to go ahead and move it himself before it even went to auction, I guess, in effort to oh, okay. recoup the money and do his thing. And I seen something on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it today, because it was obviously going around, and I thought this was interesting. I want to bring this question yeah. up because this was crazy. It was a guy by the name of Barry Spike. He said, Dame got on Breakfast Club and slandered the everyday working man, literally called any man who works for someone not a man and said, calling a man a boss is like calling him daddy just for him to end up like this. There's a lesson here somewhere. And I was like, God damn. Because we looked at that interview. That was probably one of the most iconic Breakfast Club hip-hop interviews we've ever seen. And I remember during that time, we had topic for conversations with men sitting yeah. across from us talking about this conversation. And we couldn't agree with them more. You know what I mean? But when things get tough and things get rough, we also can look at each other as men and understand we will do whatever needs to be done as men to take care of our families. And when you look at this situation, and I'm not saying Dame isn't doing that, don't know his personal business to that, but when you look at where he was then and where it eventually came now, a lot of people may say they might have saw it coming, but God damn, what a crash. Whoo, what a car accident this has been. For now, he sits here and has to give up a third of his stake over $800,000 debt that you would think Dame Dash would be able to wipe his ass with. I'm sure in videos we've seen him pour champagne over $800,000. Yeah. Ah, somebody that we've definitely grew a kinship with who we definitely appreciate and who we definitely respect. This is sad times for Dame Dash. Yeah, because let's, let's just be real about this. If he had the capital, you got the it. money, you would just pay this shit off so you can keep your state and then sell it if you're going to sell it. You wouldn't have the U.S. Marshals come in and force a sale. So as far as what the guy was saying, you know, I remember one of Rick Ross's comments. He said, I'll shovel shit, I'll CEO so my kids can play over the meatloaf. Meaning that, yeah, I might be a businessman, but it might be a time I go get me a job. And I've been there before. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, shit, shit, I got to get me a job to supplement it. And some people get a job in order to move into business. And sometimes you got to go back and get a job. Ain't no shame in that. So I will never, ever, you know, look down on a working, working person, working man, working woman. Because even in your company, you need working men, working men that's going to work and do things. For your company, mm -hmm. it's silly to 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 to, to you know, but I, but with that being said, I understand what Dane was saying. Me too. But entrepreneurship ain't for everybody. Yeah. That's one thing. Like, cause he, you know, a friend of mine owns a boxing gym, and it looked bleak for him for a minute. And now it's looking good. But the only difference is people just don't quit. We were talking about the other day. The only difference for any business that fails and succeeds is we don't quit. As many times we could say, man, forget this, bro. I'm a, you know, I'm just going this. I'm hanging it up. I ain't make, I'm, I'm spending more than I'm making. It's just you don't quit and you keep moving on and, and struggling and striving and moving money here and doing this and doing that to keep moving forward. So with Dame, it, it looks bad. It, it, look, it looks horrible because, you know, you, you want to – and not that you can't make mistakes, but this is a guy who's 
you know, who's been the three hundred million dollar, damn near billion dollar company, mm-hmm. and boasts and brags about this and that and this and that, and now your share is being sold off, and you can't tell me that you want it to be sold off. You can't tell me that. Yeah, hell you know? no, he don't. hell no, you don't. So it's just like it, it just looks a little hypocritical, a little hypocritical. But people fall on hard times. I fall on hard times, so I'm not ready to condemn Dame Dash. But it just it looks it looks looks. I'm gonna tell you, how it looks bad. It looks bad. This is what I wish Dame Dash would have kind of it, it. Dame Dash fucked up where he kind of glamorized the great side of business, but didn't give you the ugly truth about business that I'm sure he knew about relationships. What happens when shit gets muddy? What happens when shit goes bad? Because it will go bad. It ain't a matter of yeah. if. It's <laughs> when. Yeah. It goes bad. How are you going to transition? How are you going to be able to do what you have to do? And if it's in the case where it goes too bad and you need to feed your family, then brother, go get you a job. You ain't nothing wrong to turn your face down to do that. He yeah. kind of shit on that whole situation. Like, I'm a flipper. I'm this, I'm that. Kind of gave that. You're you ain't provider. got 800000 to flip. You ain't, where the Not money now. Is. Right. I ain't got less than that to flip. Right. You know what I'm saying? And nobody should be turning their head at that. But for him in particular to say all the things that he said over the years, it looks hypocritical. Yeah. And now, and now you're dealing with what every business person I'm sure has dealt with. Do you have the chops to break yourself out of it? Doesn't look like it. And I'm not saying that that makes you less of a man. It just makes you, hey, less of a businessman. Mm. Woo. This shit ain't for everybody, man. And, and sometimes I question yeah. if it's for me. Sometimes I'm sure we question if it's for each other. But you know what yeah. we don't do? Yeah. Quit. Right. It is what it is. Because, like you said, man, the hard times is. is see, everything, it's just like anything else. I mean, it's, everything is great. It's great. It's smooth. <laughs> like, you know, you're running everything. You got money. When it gets bad, that's when it's just like anything else that you do. It's like, damn. How are you going to respond? <laughs> yeah. How are you going to respond? You, gonna, you know what I mean? And it, it, it you know, but again, it, 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 it makes you into something different, a different type of animal. You know what I mean? Where you can go through. You know, hard times and bounce back and go through hard times and bounce back and, you know, eventually it'll be good. I mean, look at any billionaire now. I mean, any guy, anybody who has a story, they'll tell you they slept in a car, they got rock bottom, they got foreclosed on, they lost cars, and it looked very bleak. It didn't, you know, at some point it just went for them. Mm-hmm. It changed for them. People started in their damn garage, Microsoft and shit, so... It's it's a it's a like 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 a Nipsey said it the best. It's a marathon. Mm-hmm. It ain't a sprint. So, yeah, man. I always love. We had Dame on a few years ago. Yep. Always loved Dame. Yep. But it's certain things that I think he you know issues need to be pulled to the carpet with Dame, and we're yeah. not afraid to go at anybody on this program. Not one person. Nah. We'll give you the truth. It don't matter. He made some very, very crucial mistakes throughout his time, and he ain't recovered from them, and that's something he's going to have to look into the mirror for. But Facts. it is what it is. What else we got, dog? Let's talk about uh, Dame Dash's former business partner, man, um, Jay-Z. Well, 50 Cent is pretty much accusing Jay-Z and Rock Nation of blocking, not wanting him to even perform at the Super Bowl, but Eminem was there, and he's pretty much saying you know, Eminem wouldn't do it without him. What's your thoughts on that? I, I believe it for yeah, sure. Yeah, my bad. Go ahead. <laughs> go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. I believe it 100. <laughs> percent That's a level of petty. I definitely think Jay Z is on. And if he had any hand in it or had any control over it, and it was a lot of discussion on Jay Z's relationship with the NFL, especially around the time um, my squad, the Commanders, started changing out their ownership because Dan Snyder had something to do with some things that were being leaked by the NFL. Okay. And one of those things were Jay Z's relationship with the NFL because he wanted done more as it came to social justice and things weren't being done. So I don't know that the relationship seemed fickled as it was. Okay. So if a Jay-Z tried to basically flex his muscle and say, nah, dude ain't getting on there, I could see how there could be something. And, okay, now Eminem putting his foot down saying I'm not performing. Eminem was the huge cash cow for that Super Bowl. Yeah. I know it was a salute to West Coast and hip-hop, but everybody knew it was Eminem. Unfortunately, because Snoop and Dre and everybody else was out there, but it was an Eminem show. And, uh, yeah. I could see that a hundred percent happening, dog. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and like it's fifty cents on like a tell all spree <laughs> right now. So, um, yeah, and then this is even kind of leads into the whole Chris Brown because everybody named Mama saying Chris Brown should be at the Super Bowl.